Yeah, g'day and welcome back to my channel. I bought this beautiful old Shaoblin CNC lathe and now I'm converting it to Linux CNC. Since I've got a couple of days off work, this week I'm going to try and make some real progress on the electrical installation. Before I continue assembling down on the other end of the machine, I still need to put these limit switches back in and wire up a couple of other bits for the main motor. These are the limit switches for the variator end stops. Hey, do any of you guys know where I put the original black screws for this? I seem to have misplaced them. Next up, all these cables need to go through. These plugs were originally for the light and for the coolant pump. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna keep the coolant pump connection as it is, but I think I'll be doing the light differently. This connector gets also used for earthing. So first up, I'll connect the earth wires. Down here, I've still got six wires for each motor. Because it's a Darlander motor, it provides two different sets of windings. I'll just use one set, but I'll keep them all connected here. These four extra signal wires. Two are for the motor overheat switch and the other one is for the brake release. Now I'm not quite sure which colors are which so let's just quickly meter them. I'm assuming I'll get basic conductivity across the motor switch and I should get a resistance across the windings of the brake I guess. So let's have a look. So brown to white is three ohms whereas yellow to green is 25 ohms. So I'll have to test this later. I'm going to assume that white and brown is the motor over temperature switch. Now I'm under no illusions that this will be the last time I close this, but I'll close it up anyway, just so I've got a place to keep the lid. Right, I think it's time to plant this year's jalapenos. These are seeds from last year's plants. I'll start them off in one of these little window box planter things. That seemed to work quite well last year. Adding parts and covers also gives a nice feeling of achievement and progress. Shoblin made most of the covers for this machine out of cast aluminium, but for whatever reason, this one is just made out of fiberglass. I'm not going to talk up these two screws because they're unsupported and I don't want to break this cover. In addition, I also need to make some progress on the site cabinet I'm making for Mrs. Rotary. So now that I've laminated up some pieces, I next have to join them together. For this, my mate Norbert 
lent me his biscuit router. I'm going to put some of these in. When building aircraft structures, you need materials with predictable strength properties. Wood, as a natural product, is not that homogenous. Historically, there was quite a difference in the way that wooden aircraft were built in the United States versus how they were built in Europe. The US was able to exploit significant stands of old growth Sitka spruce up in the Pacific Northwest. And a lot of work was done to determine what allowable strength you could expect from that timber. By the time aircraft were being built in large numbers, stands of old growth timber were no longer available in Europe. So while American built aircraft tend to have spars and other structural components made from long high quality pieces of Sitka spruce, in Europe you'll typically find those structural members laminated up from multiple pieces of lower quality timber. Cool, mail time. So this is a Danfoss sine wave filter. This is the one that goes between the VFD and the motor. Now after a couple of days of analysis paralysis, I, th I think I've got the general layout pretty much uh, decided upon. So this back plate, which goes right deep into the cabinet, this gets um, three phase power, through the line contactor into the main motor inverter. Power then goes through the sine wave filter and out to the main motor. Down the bottom, pneumatic control and variator control. So that's all that'll go into that side. I still need some more of this cable channel, but up here I'm gonna have main power coming in from the main switch. For a circuit breaker, these are just placeholders. There's gonna be three phase contactors for the main motor, the variator and the coolant pump motor. Next comes circuit breakers for the single phase users. This is my DC supplies, my safety relay, managing the e-stop. Along here is going to be terminals, and then all of the control electronics will be down along this row, with more cable channel below it. This still needs the final components to decide its layout, so in the meantime, I'll get on with this side. Mail time. Hey, lock picking set. Nah, that's just the box. This modern 24 volt contactor is way smaller than the originals that we used on this machine. All right, well that's enough procrastinating. It's time to actually start assembling this. One lesson I learned from the mini lathe is never mount anything from the back. Everything's got a bolt on the front. I bought this Lenser inverter used, but unfortunately I realized it doesn't actually have any mounting brackets.
should work. So this is a wee bit long, I'll just whip the top off that tab. Give these a quick wipe down with paint thinners. Now some of you guys have commented on me cleaning up this data plate and some suggest that I use like blue tack to pull the gunge out from between the letters. Well I couldn't find any here in Austria but I did find this stuff so let's see if it works. Yeah this also appears to be no match for high quality Swiss gunk. Right, I better start wiring this thing up. Luckily there's lots of wire like this which came out of the machine which is already the right thickness and has the ends nicely terminated. So I'm going to reuse as much of this as I can. When do you just use point to point wiring and when do you go out to a terminal block and back? It seems to me if it's just a one to one relationship like here it's better just to go straight from one to the other. Whereas with my main power supplies where I've got you know, three phase coming in and then having to split out individual phases that makes more sense to me to take that out to a terminal block. But if I'm doing this wrong please jump in and tell me how to do it correctly. This motor wiring out of the inverter until it goes through the filter, this must be the, like the worst EMI producer of the whole machine. So I think I'm going to shield it and just run the shield to the earth. I'm not exactly sure if that's necessary, but shielding's never a bad idea, is it? I still need to tie all of these earths to a central earthing point. I was told to keep this line as short as possible. Now it might be neater to take that down into the cable channel or even to a terminal block and then back up but I guess it's better to have low EMI than neatness but what do you guys think? Would you have run it straight ahead or would you go down and back up? I need to design an adapter to 3D print to hold this onto the DIN rail. So I've picked up a DIN rail model of the Thingiverse converted the mesh to surfaces, then converted the surfaces to solids, and finally used their simplify tool to make it a normal looking solid. FreeCAD's actually pretty good for this. After that I added the various features needed to mount the different boards, then exported the model back out as an STL file again. I used Cura as a slicer, had to sort of flap around a bit here because the parts came out of the STL export with the wrong orientation, but that's easy to fix. All right. well, this one I think is a complete failure. You can see it didn't bond to the bed properly, it's curved up. So it can go straight in the rubbish. Now the nuts get put in. Well there's the mechanical stuff mounted. I've got a lot of wiring to do and if you've got any suggestions how to make wiring interesting on video please put it in the comment section. Well thanks a lot for watching and I look forward to seeing you again next time.